I got, I'm, I'm like, I'm like Da Vinci with this. Bang, 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 oh, bang, bang. Thank okay, you, Mama you Bats. Appreciate it. Thank you. Obrigado. Obrigado. Oh, right. You said it right. I'll never forget it. Yeah, we have chicken feet here. Oh man, the glizzy is on fire. There you go. All right, you guys, we're headed to a secret Portuguese club here in Mineola. Secret, secret. Hey everyone, welcome to another epic Portuguese food video with our friend Joey Bats. We're going all the way to Long Island. Then we're gonna see his new Chelsea Market location, and then we even have a home cooked Portuguese meal by Mama Bats herself. Self. This is a very special episode, so if you love Portuguese food or want to know more about it, check out this video and hit that like button right now. Welcome everybody to another episode of Fung Bros Food. We are delving deeper into Portuguese food out in New York City. Let's go. Yo, right, Joey, Joey we were here a year and a half ago. We did a video about Portuguese food. Yes, yes. It went bonkers. Um, it went viral in the United States, but I think it especially went viral in Portugal. Yeah, I was getting messages from Portugal, Brazil, Angola, Mozambique. It was really cool. All really right. Cool. So this time around, we're gonna go to one of my other favorite restaurants. It's more of a meat base, a lot of grilled meats. Uh, it's called Churrasqueira Bairada. It's in Miniola, New York, which is another very large Portuguese community. Straight up, this is the first time I've ever been to Long Island in my life. All right, you guys, we made it to Long Island, New York. We're in Mineola. Joey, where are we? Man, Jeff, Mineola is another big Portuguese community in the Northeast, probably the biggest in Long Island. Churrasqueira Bairada is one of the premier Portuguese restaurants in the Northeast. I've been coming here my whole life. I'm not even from Long Island or Mineola, but I always make it a point to get out here to have some really good Portuguese food. And to be clear that the people who started this restaurant, they're from a similar region that your family is from. Yes, I mean, we definitely want to confirm that, but they're definitely from the continent and definitely from the North. If you guys the first time to Siabra, is going to be more seafood based and here is going to be more meat based. All right everybody, real quick announcement. Saturday, April 29th, starting at 12 p.m. here at the Chelsea Market location. Joey Betts, this guy right here, is giving away hundreds of pastel donatas. The first hundred people that show up at 12 are going to get two free. They don't even have to buy anything, just two of these. And then the next hundred are going to get a free one, guys. So come by. He's just giving them away. What, nice. why, why are you giving them away, Joey? We're just, we're just so excited to be opening at the Chelsea, at Chelsea Market, so we got to give away. All right, guys, Saturday, April 29th, starting at 12 p.m. I'm going to try the vegan one. This is my first time try, trying the vegan pastel de nada. Listen, you know I love the don tot. You know I love the po tot, the Chinese version, but it does come from the Portuguese. This is the passion fruit one. Like that passion fruit? A little sweet? A little bit of sweetness? My prediction is you're gonna run out of these passion fruit ones. Impossible. Bro, the passion fruit and the vegan ones, A1 guys. Check it out, Joey Bats, Chelsea Market, April 29th. Joining us today, we got Joey Bats. Joey, right. you got us in Long Island for the very first time in our entire lives. Where are we at? Listen, we gotta branch out, guys. Now, listen, uh, uh, aside from Newark, if you wanna have some good Portuguese food, coming out to Mineola, Long Island is an excellent idea. It's one of the, uh, the other large Portuguese communities in the tri-state area. And this specific restaurant, Churrasqueira Bairada, Phenomenal, phenomenal. Anything grilled. All right, starting off, Joey, what are we looking at? These are some gigantic tiger prawns. I almost thought, you know, to me, I almost thought I was at a Thai restaurant. <laughs> I'll be honest, I've never had anything this big before. These are amazing. All right, guys, and then here we have their house-made chili sauce. Is this Parity Parity or, or something different? It could be their version of Piti Piti, yeah. Guys, this is just round one. We're gonna go through, you know, as usual, try to give you the background of every dish just so you have a really good idea of what Portuguese food really is. I can't even take care of ordering this. I oh, take care of it. I honestly think that grilled seafood is one of the most overlooked aspects of Mediterranean food. Portuguese, Portuguese tiger prawns. This is one of the best pieces of shrimp I just keep eating I've buckets. ever had. That was grilled perfectly. It's not dried out. It was still plump. All right, on to round two, guys. I gotta quickly talk about this Portuguese cornbread and this Portuguese soda, the sumol. I mean, man, this cornbread is not as yellow as other cornbreads, but it's very thick, very tasty. Hot de milho. Mm. <laughs> oh, man. The Portuguese cornbread has a strong corn flavor. Ooh. Number two, we're at the Portuguese grill house. What are we looking at? <laughs> so this is one of Bairada's most popular meals. This is the tomahawk steak. All the equipment 
that created this tomahawk steak was imported directly from Portugal. Portugal gets a lot of flavors from the age of exploration, going out to other yes. places, learning things, yes. spices, bringing them back. Where's Piri Piri from? So Piri Piri, it comes from Mozambique. It comes from Africa. From the days of you know Vasco da Gama, we went around the coast of Africa, Cape of Africa to India. Beef, Beef tomahawk. tomahawk. <laughs> so why are we doing uh, some Brazilian barbecue here? Man, listen. The same way, the same way you have Piri Piri from Mozambique and you have curry from India, we have Pequena from Brazil. Or pork sauce. Guys, I think what is so cool about coming to a Portuguese restaurant is that you get Brazilian barbecue because obviously, you know, uh, they have Portuguese in Brazil. They speak Portuguese. That's the language. So now you get to draw stuff that is from South America and you get to eat it at the same restaurant that you're eating everything else at. Linguiça de porco. I was about to eat it without the peri peri oil. Tripping. Some of Luke's pretty slow. Hold on. Oh, delicious. Oh. You guys, this is turkey bacon, right? Yeah, so it'd be, be uh, Peru. I don't know, Intercost Peru. <laughs> That's some of the best turkey I've ever had in my life. It's so good. Let me tell you something. When people say European food doesn't have a lot of flavor, they're referring to Scottish and British food, all right? Thank you, thank you. And maybe German food. This is a grilled, what, pork neck? A pork rib. A pork rib, all oh, right. Yeah, Costello's pork rib. David, let me know if you want me to hit it with the peri peri, yeah, bro. Um, paint I'm ready. Paint I got. I'm, I'm like. I'm like Da Vinci with this. Bang, 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 oh bang, my bang. goodness! Pintame. Okay, here we have a mixed kebab. Where is this coming from? So we call it a spatada mista. It's got a little bit of everything in there. I'm an artist. Anything. Mm. Oh wow. Here we have Costellas de Vaca and Costellas de Porco. Ooh, okay, okay, uh, yeah, let's get it. and pig. Please. <laughs> but Joe, we have to be clear that you, uh, when you go back and visit North Pol Portugal, are you eating stuff like this? Or is this obviously, this would be like for the, the, the president. <laughs> yeah, this is really, really fancy stuff. I would be eating, you know, the ribs for sure, the, the skewers, these, the, 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 the Costellas here, definitely, awesome. but like a, something like this or a porterhouse. Very rare. Right. Here you got the beef rib. Here you have the pork rib. Pork rib's obviously a lot smaller. <laughs> Let's go in. <laughs> Joey, I don't know if I'm violating any sort of Portuguese protocol by picking this up with my hands. Is this acceptable? Of course it's acceptable. Acceptable. Back home, my grandmother used to say, a quinoa ceremonias. That means there are no ceremonies here. Eat however you're most comfortable. Okay, well, hey, oh. you guys. Skirt steak. steak. <laughs> mm. This reconfirms. My opinion that skirt steak is like the best. I love it. Yeah. It's the yeah. best, man. All right, you guys, we're gonna take a break from the beef proteins, moving on to the chicken. What are we looking at? Because Portuguese chicken, especially Piri Piri chicken, is pretty famous. Guys, the way that they're serving this here is exactly the way I grew up eating it. At all the festivals, the full chicken on the grill, Piri Piri style. This is what New York needs and wants without even knowing it. Piri Piri, Piri, Piri chicken, chicken, baby. Man, and this is what they're famous for here. Nice char. Mm. Mm. Yo, that skin was ridiculous. Just the right amount of carcinogens in the skin, <laughs> but you need it. The carcinogens taste good, bro. All right, guys, here we have a chicken leg right off the grill. And because of the holes of the skewer, I'm actually gonna pour the oil into it. Yeah, it's gonna flow through. There we go. Piri piri on the piri piri. <laughs> es frango una maravilla. All right, you guys, we got the seafood coming in. We had the beef, oh. we had the chicken. No. And now, of course, what Portugal is fam famous for, the ocean. Guys, right? You guys to... love the ocean. You guys love eating on the ocean. You guys love traveling on the ocean, all types of ocean things. Yo, I gotta be honest with you. I had no idea that they had this substantial of an offering at seafood. Of course, we gotta start off with probably Portugal's most signature dish. I'm not saying people in America know about it, but people all over Europe know about it. What is this, Joey? This is called bacalhau, salted codfish. Bacalhau. bacalhau. Mm. You can tell mm. the taste of saltiness in it. We mm. liked it salty. Said everything is grilled here. What are we looking at? Everything. Branzino, swordfish, salmon. Reconfirms why salmon is my favorite fish too. <laughs> All right, next up on the grilled seafood plates, we got camarão grillado, oh, which man. is grilled shrimp. Eat the whole thing. The Don't whole take thing. off the shell. Mmm. All right, so Joey, as I was devouring my shrimp hole with the shell on, I saw you very meticulously 
taking apart this shrimp shell with a knife. This is, I'll be honest with you, this comes from my lazy days where I don't want to get my hands dirty. So a long time ago, I learned how to how to take these off, you know, and it's, uh, it's a little more work. Oh. All right, next up, we got a fish that probably is not even that commonly served, even at Portuguese restaurants, we got a swordfish. What right. do you call it? We call this espadarte grelhado. Oh. That's right. Mmm. It's pretty buttery and soft. It is. I didn't expect it to be so tender. All right, starting off dessert, Joey, you got to take us through this. This is Molotov. Okay, it's but this is not the Russian Molotov cocktail. No, not to be confused with a V. It's Molotov with an F. It's a Portuguese dessert made with egg whites and caramel. Oh, right. oh, look at that. It's like a mountain of meringue. So you ate this one. Like. That one, not as much. Mm. That's really light. Super sweet. Like, very sweet. The caramel sweet. Very light. Moving on, it looks similar, but obviously, you know, it's got its own vibe. This is called natas du sel, or cream from heaven. Wow. This wow. I've eaten many times. Yo, everything's really soft. It's super light. Let's see if it's super sweet. Oh. Wow. Oh, that's the one. Guys. I like that one. Guys. <laughs> Guys, uh, you know I'm kind of muluku for uh, maluku. Maluku for uh, peri peri oil. I'm just gonna do it. I know it's crazy. I'm just, I'm just saying. I just gotta try it. Everything has to be tried with peri peri. It it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. Don't yeah, sleep on don't it. Sleep on it. Okay, and our last dish before we go on to our next spot, Joey. This is called bolu vlasha. Sorry, bolu vlasha. I started my business on this. Maria crackers are dunked in coffee and layered in a vanilla cream, and then more Maria cracker crumbled up on top. Oh, okay, okay. This is a little harder. Oh, wow. That has a super unique texture. Mm -hmm. It's like eating soft cookie with cream in the middle. Yeah. I mean, this is what I call a cookie cake. All right, you guys, Churisqueira Bayara was honestly one of the best meals we've had in a very long time. And you guys know we are constantly eating for episodes of From Bros Food. I mean, I'm telling you, they need to bring the authentic Portuguese experience to the city. Guys, Portuguese food, underrated, under talked about. We already said it, we'll say it multiple, I'll say it when Joey's not even around. <laughs> Joey, why do you think it has only stayed in these enclave suburban zones, you know, about 40, 30 minutes out? Simple answer, guys. We have no representation in Manhattan. The Portuguese came to New York and didn't stay there. But every other culture and ethnicity and nationality stayed there. And that's why we know more about like Ethiopian food or Vietnamese food than Portuguese cuisine. Right. It's just, it's just it's not, it has no coverage. Well, Joey, exposure. we know you're passionate about it. I know that you're leading the way. You're kind of like a Portuguese ambassador. <laughs> but uh, what's the next spot that we're going to in uh, Mineola? So every time we have a meal, guys, we always finish with a cafe and a shot of bagasso. And okay. that's where we're going to the right. Portuguese club, which is like a membership club for Portuguese people. Uh, I sell my tarts there all the time in the winter, summer, sorry. And I want you guys to have an authentic finish for this meal. So we're all right, go guys. So we're getting, we're gonna go to an exclusive spot. That's right. All right, Joey's the way in. All right, you guys. We're headed to a secret Portuguese club here in Mineola. Secret, secret. Oh my gosh, there's a back finish, door, guys. We gotta finish this with a cafe. I don't know what type of stuff I'm gonna see here. Uh, Maybe they're doing some crazy business. All right, you guys, we are at the Portuguese Club of uh, Mineola. Portuguese Club of Mineola. This is something that's very, very cool to me. This is something, Andrew, that we probably never would have found in, in 200 years. No, no, I would have not ever come here, but uh, without Joey. But Joey, what are we gonna be doing here? So it's real simple, guys, after every meal, or anyone you want to take a break, you always say, let's go grab a coffee. Coffee being an espresso and maybe a shot of uh, aguardiente or something like that, like we did right. with the last video. Okay, all right. And in this spot, every, is everybody here Portuguese, essentially? Yeah, this, is a, this is a Portuguese members only club, so everybody here is Portuguese. Is this, you can hear it in the background, too. Is this what uh, where Fat Tony might be, except the Italian version back in the day? <laughs> Possibly. They, they probably still have those. This kind of vibe, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's right. All right, cool. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, do they have any like cakes or pastries or anything as well that I you didn't have? Yeah, you know, here yeah, it's like gonna be coffee. Yeah, we have. Yeah, there's some stuff. Thank you. The make it. They have dessert. Yeah. There, there's a kitchen here. There you guys eat, right? Yeah. They have. They, yeah, have, they have, have dessert. See, look, menu of the day. All right, guys, we're gonna do espresso and take a shot of the classic. What is this stuff? Aguardiente, São Domingos, <laughs> moonshine, moonshine. Yeah, yeah, moonshine. Always good news when you do a moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee's hot. Don't take this as a shot. Sip on this. Oh, this is way smoother than the one you guys had back. Remember the one we had, the clear one? This is a better version of that. Oh, that's not bad. Much better. 
All right, just so you know, there are two main versions of Agro Dent. This is the alcohol, aka the Portuguese moonshine. What's the difference between the two? So this is the regular one here, Agua Ardente Bagaceta. This one was harsh. This one was harsh, and this is called Velhíssima, which means super old. All right. Velhíssima means translates to old, muy smoother. Yeah, this is Much like smoother. the XO. That's like the uh, crown royal. Exactly. I don't know. And this one actually has a little color to it, as you can see. Oh man, I'm already hiccuping. Uh oh. All right, Joey, before we head back into the city, back to your spot, um, what are we looking at? This is the dessert that's <laughs> sent us off. She says it's Nutella, so I think it's just a, a, a pastry shell with Nutella inside. Wow, it's super soft. All right, everything made to order here at Miniola. Mm, good. Bye, bye, bye. It was a great trip to Miniola. First time in Long Island. I mean, hey, so far, I have a great image of Long Island in my mind. Right, right. <laughs> All right, but let's head back into the city because Joey, at your spot, you got some new items you're trying to show off. Well, yes, definitely. All right, everybody, we made it to Chelsea Market. We're about to check out Joey Bat's latest location. It's right here in Chelsea Market. I mean, this is this is dope. This is right. We're you here. Right here. out of the Elias. Yo, this cool. is the most highest profile food hall in the entire city. Yeah, Congratulations. Right Thank you wow. very much. Guys, oh, Joey man. Bat, newest look from the Elias Allen Street. We were just there earlier in the video, hey, and now we're here. I don't want to say that the last video helped you get this spot, but it did get a lot of views. <laughs> it did get a lot of views, that's right. Thank you. Oh, what is it like being here, man? You're next to very fresh noodles. They have one of the best Amazing. beef noodle soups in the hotel. Amazing. And tell you what, today, the first time I've, I've seen no line there. Usually there's a monster line that wraps around, and we obviously benefit from that line because everyone's saying like, oh, what are these over here? Like, come on up. Oh, well, well, you get a little bit of overflow from very fresh noodles. So you got the, the Chinese-Portuguese uh, yeah. collaboration going on. So the problem is we're sold out a lot of stuff. I have the dark chocolate nappas, traditional nappas. And we have now this new, I call it the XL Portuguese croissant. It's very brioche. It's a big boy. One, of course, guys, we are looking at the originator uh, of the potat, actually from Macau, Andrew. This is the oh. original version. The pastel de nata. Yes, guys, you got to give credit where it's due. These are the Portuguese egg tarts. Chinese got their own versions, but uh, they did it first. Right. Oh, yeah. Which one is this, though? Dark chocolate. I'm telling you guys, there is a reason that Joey Bats has a perfect score on Yelp. Maravillosa. All right, we're looking at a XL Portuguese croissant. Brioche style, yeah, right? Yeah, brioche style, yeah. It's a big fucker. Oh, man. Butter on there. Yo, this is dope. Joey, this reminds me of Panatone, Panatone but yeah. without the fruit on the inside. Yes. I totally could see adding butter or making sandwiches out of it. Hell yeah. Or even a pate spread we do in Portugal. Okay, we're here with Joey Bat's mom, Mrs. Bat's. We, and we're having what? We're having San Domingos. San Domingos Aguardiente. Bagaceira. Okay. How many have you had today? Uh, this is my fourth. Oh, okay. Okay. I call it a Corona killer. Oh. <laughs> to everybody. Yep. Guys, we're looking at the Tres Montanos. What flavors are we breaking down? Uh, chorizo, chicken, beef, shrimp, and mushrooms. Okay. And we have nine different flavors. Straight from the north of Portugal. That's right. All right. No, they're, they're very light, so don't worry about it. All right, what are you, what are you going for? Sausage every time. All right. That's the, that was the one I was going for, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys, we're about to go for the, uh, the chorizo. Chorizo Transmontano. Oh, yeah. The closest thing that people may have had to something like it is like maybe almost even like a toaster strudel. Yes. But with obviously savory. With savory, yeah. All right, you guys, we're wrapping up here at Joey Bats. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, But yeah, I just wanted to really briefly talk about like, you know, kind of the age of exploration, like you said, and there's so many flavors in Portugal, like we said, the peri-peri being influenced by the African spices. Yep. But then also, I guess Portugal being sort of the source of inspiration for Japanese tonkatsu. Yeah, during during those exploration days, the Portuguese, you know, specifically Vasco da Gama went around the Cape of Africa all the way to India, and he established all these like trading posts, right? And that was really kind of our game was trading. So spices from India is got to be the main reason why we're eating a lot of curry in Portugal that uh, you'll get in Lisbon a lot of fusions with Goa, like India, the Goa Portuguese fusion food. You'll have uh, the Pidi Pidi from Mozambique and all the other flavors that were, that were, you know, all that stuff. I know that that didn't originate in Portugal, so it's coming from those places that we went to. Um, and, you know, a good example is how we drink a lot of 
uh, passion fruit, maracujá. That doesn't come from Portugal, that comes from Brazil. I think more, more and more people are gonna discover this as they, as they try Portuguese cuisine because it's a cuisine that's definitely underrated. What do you think, I guess last question, what is it gonna take for like Portuguese food to get more known? Obviously you guys are doing your guys' part, running a cool Portuguese cafe in the high traffic part of Manhattan, but like what is it gonna take? Two, two things, two things are integral to that in my opinion. One is tourism in Portugal, which thankfully has skyrocketed. And that gains a lot of people, a lot of exposure. People are Americans in particular are going there, trying the food, coming back and like, man, just like they're Googling for my or for prestige not and I'm, you know, the one that pops up and we're shipping all over the US as a result of that. One of us, someone like me or any other entrepreneur here needs to be like, all right, we're going to open a restaurant and really dig deep and get that food out there in front of the people that give it the exposure that it needs. Here, we're, we've basically been fo focused on like small pastries, different little small drinks. It's a cafe, but someday, hopefully soon, sooner rather than later, I'd love to open something where we could, you know, start putting together real meals and getting stuff out there. So obviously, my mother would be cooking them, <laughs> or at least setting those recipes. <laughs> Hi right, Joey, uh, we just left your Chelsea Market location. We're back in the LES and we had so much great Portuguese so restaurant much, food. So you took much. us to so many great so restaurants from, from the first video to this video, but we got to have some homemade, home style food from Mama Bats, personally. Yeah, and I know we weren't ready to eat, but it's time for dinner and Mama took it to the next level. So all this is homemade. Oh my gosh. Chorizo asada. <laughs> and it's on fire. And it's on fire, exactly. Uh, what else do we have here? Here we have the Camarão Gambas, Gambas Arinho, which is like the garlic shrimp. Remember last time you put a lot of PD PD on that? Yes. You love that. <laughs> and then what do we have? We have chicken feet here. This is something that, Man. honestly, it kind of looked like the dim sum chicken feet that I was used to. This is called peepees, right? Peepees, it's chicken feet, uh, chicken gizzards, and necks, Ooh. and hearts. And, and hearts, oh. too. Hey, shout out to all the cultures that got a delicious chicken feet That's dish, right. all right? Uh, they're amazing. <laughs> and then what do we have here? Here we have the barbiguel abonion pato, which is cockles, or uh, I call yeah, them baby cockles. clams. You gotta say that one more time in Portuguese. Barbiguel abonion pato. Barbiguel abonion pato. Abulhão de pato. Abulhão de pato. That's a funny one to say. Abulhão de pato. There you go. Oh man, the glazy is on fire. There you go. Oh, that's you want these to always be kind of fatty, because right. that's where all the flavor comes yeah, can from. I, let me just yeah, get one ahead. piece right now. Oh my goodness. Hot. Take a look at this. I can see the big chunks of pork in there. So it's not like a finely ground sausage. It's not no. like so ground we, up meat. It's almost like pieces of meat packed together. It's, it always is. It tastes better. Because if you just if you just like uh, do like a, um, what do you call that Polish one? The kibasa? That's ground up. Cheers. Chorisa. Chorisa. <laughs> mm. Going in on the shrimp plate. What's the name of it? Uh, this again? one, so it's it's been known to be called two different ones. One is Camarão Alinho or Camarão Aguilho. Either way you say it, it's garlic shrimp. Oh. It's a garlic sauce. Garlicky wine sauce. Oh, hell yeah. Man. With a little pd pd in there. Oh, the spice is hitting my tongue. I can taste it. <laughs> oh! Mm. The bread and the pd pd. It's swimming, baby. It's swimming. That was one of the best bites right there, man. That was oh, yeah. crazy. Man, I gotta tell you, sometimes it is so surprising how much the food looks similar to Asian food. Right. But I think it's because a lot of Asian dishes that use shrimp are also putting it in some type of chili sauce, garlic right. sauce, light sauce. Right. And, I mean, there's, there's what, several ways to eat shrimp, but not infinite. Right, uh, th and, and this, I mean, this is different. This is a staple appetizer for us in Portugal. No. I, I think Asian people, especially Cantonese people, will love Portuguese food. All right, this dish, never had this I before. They were, a, we didn't have this at the restaurant. No, I think that's a throat. Yeah, oh, this, is a, this is a neck. This I, is a gizzards. I, I, mm. Gizzards here is my favorite. Chicken okay. gizzard, chicken feet, that's a neck. No, this no, is no. a good example of, of people using every part of the chicken or mm. whatever to eat, you know, so nothing oh. goes to weight. No. It's yeah. gonna sound weird, but if you haven't had chicken neck, you gotta try it. <laughs> we got the clams, and these are really baby clams. Wow. I call them baby clams, but these are cockles. Where do we go? All right. Where do we go? Yep. Yeah. They're so tiny. I mean, you gotta eat a million of these to fucking fill up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so tall. Yeah. Heavy wine flavor, that's delicious. All right, everybody, this dish right here, I never thought I would have it. This is a rabbit dish in Portuguese. It's coelho frito. Coelho frito, yes. Coelho frito, and it's potato seasoned with nice pieces of rabbit. Yes, <laughs> rabbit, year of the rabbit, Portuguese rabbit.
right here at Joey Bats. <laughs> a lot like chicken. Yeah. Except like they don't them. fly, they hop. Okay, listen, my first time having rabbit, I didn't really know what to expect, but definitely it feels like a smaller chicken. And uh, no, and I can, I, I mean, honestly, I would just say it honestly just tastes most like chicken. I can't say it tastes like rabbit. Um, I know some people have had frog. Obviously, frog tastes a little bit in between like fish and uh, chicken, but this is definitely kind of like a small chicken, maybe a little bit like a duck flavor, but overall, it's really good, man. So this is called arroz cavidela. It's either made with chicken, yeah, or or rabbit. This time it's chicken, and it's also has made with blood. Oh my goodness! This is the blood rice that you were talking about. Uh -huh, wow! Uh -huh. Arroz de cabidela. I don't know. This might sound funny. It's not that bloody. That's what I'm I saying. barely taste it. That's right. But the blood does add a little bit something, a little bit of that irony kind of savory yep. flavor. Yeah. It's kind of a weird way to describe blood, so but good. I'm just saying. You cannot get this everywhere. Not everywhere mm. sells this. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Giddy up, boys. Whoa, 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 whoa. Shoot. Joey, this is our last hot dish, but it is a banger. What are we looking at? <laughs> this is a roast marisco, mm. which translates to seafood rice. Wow. That's I have loaded. a funny question for you, all right? Go ahead. Do you think this is better or worse than paella? We make paella too. This is not paella. Oh, My mom makes paella. Uh, this is a different one. All this right. Is different. But is it because paella has up. meat and and seafood in oh. it? This is just seafood. But yo, this one looks amazing. Oh yeah. Man. My mom don't mess around, man. Bro, oh. come on. That is incredible. It's incredible, right? Oh, it's She's very like this. This this dish is not as peppery mm -hmm. or trying to be spicy. It's very savory, yep. but um, it has a really nice broth. And just the seafood flavor is all up in there. You got shrimp, mussels, squid, lobster, clams, crazy. Joey, what is it like to be from a European country that is known for eating seafood? Because I would say typically a lot of like, you know, Americans or, or Caucasian Americans, they're not known for eating a lot of seafood. They might eat a little bit of lobster, but not really. Right, right, right. What, no, what I listen. I grew up eating seafood. I, I don't know. I mean, we're on the, we're on the water, but you're right. A lot of my friends, a lot of my Polish friends, a lot of my other European friends, they really don't eat a lot of seafood. But we are heavy, heavy on the seafood dish, especially especially with the codfish. All right, we are ending off an amazing, one of the best homemade meals I've ever had. Shout out to Mama Bats. But we're here at the dessert section, and, and can you tell us about what, what what's about to happen? That's the drunken pear. Mm. So she's pouring wine on top of this pear that's been baked in wine, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, that is a bowl of the bolacha. This is typical from the north of Portugal. Basically, it's the Maria crackers dunked in espresso and layered in a vanilla cream. You leave this in the fridge overnight. Bowl of the bolacha. Creamy. So this is. I, I could see why you thought you could run a business based off uh -huh. this. This is good. And, and, and I like it. It's a little bit. There's a little bit of coffee, but it's not like a tiramisu exactly. coffee. That's called serradura, or that translates to sawdust. Wow. Also has the, the Maria crackers crumbled up in a light, fluffy cream sauce. Uh, okay, so this should taste similar, but maybe with different textures. Yes. Oh, wow. Dang. I hate to play favorites. I don't know, man. That was really good. It's good, right? <laughs> this is called Baba de Camelo, which mm. means camel drool. Oh, why do they call it that? <laughs> good question. I don't know. <laughs> oh, this is like a real soft, like, kind of mousse. The way it drizzles down, oh. I guess, maybe. I don't know why the comparison to camels or anything, but... Whoa, never had anything like that. Right. It's like a super light whipped up mousse. In the wine pear, or the drunken pear. Drunken pear, here. Go wow. ahead, stab it, stab it. Boom, mm. there you go. Make it more drunk. How do I say this in Portuguese? Pera bebeda. Oh. Great way to wash things down. A little bit of the tannins and the sourness and the sweetness of the wine. Mm. Man, that's crazy. All the Portuguese food is delicious. <laughs> Honestly, like all the dishes. And I think it's very easy to eat um, in a good way, where I mean that obviously there is spices with the piri piri, but there's also like a lot of good seasoning, but it doesn't, it doesn't taste like, I think just, it's very universal. And I just wish that more people would have it. Living, after living in New York for 10 years now, I just find that the problem is, the reason why no one likes, knows Portuguese food, is not because no one was going to Portugal. It's because the Portuguese immig immigrants that came to New York didn't stay here. Whereas every other ethnicity stayed mm. and then we got exposed to it here in the city that matters, yeah. right? That's they true. all went to Jersey or Long Island and you're not getting the same coverage and exposure yeah. out in those places. No, you, you're right. You need the immigrants to stay here mm -hmm. and, and serve the food and, and serve it in a delicious way. So shout out to you, man. Thank Thank you, Joey, as oh, thank always. You, thank you very much. Thank okay, you, Mama you Bats. Here.
I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. Obrigado. All right, you guys, next up on our Portuguese food crawl is Frango's Piri Piri. This is really popular in Lisbon. And what's interesting here is you're going to find a little bit more African influence in the chicken. Long story short, Portugal had colonies in Mozambique and Angola, and the one thing that they really, really took a big influence from was the African bird's eye chili, and that's what went into the piri piri. I'm telling you guys, this chicken is gonna be delicious, and definitely you are gonna see the African influence. Um, this is a chicken thigh that has been coated with, you know, African red bird's eye chilies from Angola, from Mozambique, from the age of exploration. Um, if you guys know, Portugal is like kind of just around the corner from Africa. Obviously served with some French fries with the peri-peri sauce on them. All right, you guys, we have so many different peri-peri sauces here, different versions. Um, This dish went everywhere. It's even popular in Macau. They have a dish called African chicken, fei zao gai. And uh, yeah, let's check it out. That might be one of the best chicken thighs I've had in a very, very long time. I think it's cool the way these are different types of PDP leaf sauce. It's probably one of the best underrated ones in America, to be honest. Like we said, there are different types of PDP. This one is a hot mango one. It's going on the PDP chicken. It's double PDP. I'm so glad that we discovered PDP. I think that everybody needs to be exposed to PDP sauce. I'm telling you, check out a Nando's, check out a Frango's, wherever you are. But I'm telling you, whoo! This is hot.